Hello there. Uh, continuing my series on Python for physics people, physics instructors, physics students. Uh, I'm not really focusing on the physics so much as the Python, showing you kind of things that you could do in a class um, to start using Python. And, and again, it just takes a lot of practice. There's a lot of little tricks and stuff. I don't even know everything. But just making programs, modifying programs, changing it up, that's how you get things to work. Uh, so I've been looking at springs. And, and I want to, instead of having a mass connected to a spring and a fixed point, have two masses, like this, connected by a spring. And it turns out that this is super useful for a lot of different things. Um, but I want to build this and then use this to look at two things, uh, the center of mass and conservation momentum. So for, first, let me review uh, if I have a spring right here an unstretched spring with some length L0. And then I pull it to a new length L. And I'm going to call the vector L, actually I drew that as a thing, the vector L is from the one point of the spring to the end of the spring. And it's a vector. And this is a scalar value. But by making this a vector, then I can deal with the vec with the spring moving around in different directions. So it's going to give me a vector force. This is the model I can use for the vector value of that spring force. K is the spring constant, or how stiff that spring is. L is the, this is the magnitude of that vector L minus L0. That gives me, this right here gives me the stretch, how much it's stretched or compressed. And then L hat is a vector, a unit vector in the direction of L. And if I have that, then I get a spring force as a vector. And this is going to make it very uh, great, right? Because F net equals delta P over delta T. That's the momentum principle. And if I have this as a vector, I get the change in momentum as a vector. So I can move things around in 3D, and it's going to be great for everything. So I want to build that. Now, the other thing I want to do is to look at the momentum of the system, mass 1 plus mass 2 momentum, and also the center of mass. So suppose I have mass 1 and mass 2 right here. Uh, I can find the center of mass. I'll call that R center of mass. And the expression for that is R center of mass is equal to, for this case, m1 r1 plus m2 r2 over m1 plus m2. That's the definition of center of mass. And yes, this is a vector equation because uh, you could break this into an x and y and z equations that are scalar, or I could just do it as one vector equation, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to build this <coughs> in Python, uh, and then I'm going to look at the, I'm going to find the center mass and see how that moves. And then I'm going to look at conservation momentum. So let's get to it. Jumping over here to Python. I'm using GlowScript v Python in Trinket. Um, and I'm going to give you the code to this down below. Uh, I'm going to give you the playlist, a link to the playlist for all my videos on Python physics stuff. Uh, and if you want to look back at the momentum principle, numerical calculations, uh, some of that stuff I'm just going to, I'm not really going to focus on. Um, because they're in previous videos. Okay, let me make this a little bit smaller because I do like I do like to see both things. Okay, I, I'm going to make in my mind I have this these two masses connected by springs out in space. There's no gravitational forces or anything like that. So let's just uh, pick some values um, for the spring. So k. Let's just make the masses. M1 is equal to sphere. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm in my mind. They're like little, they're balls like that. Okay, so this is uh, has a radius of let's say one centimeter, and its position is going to be equal to. Let's just start it off with uh, the position of. Let's put it at the origin. Vector zero zero zero. <clears throat> radius is equal to zero point zero one. Color equals color dot yellow and then make trail I don't know if I should do that equals true and then I'll make the other one m2 is another sphere position is going to be equal to I'm going to just put it on the x-axis for now so if that's one centimeter let's put them seven centimeters apart I'm just picking stuff here I'm not really uh, thinking about it vector 0.0700 and let's make this radius, uh, make this mass 2 a little bit more massive. So 0 0.02 and make it color. The, the two colors that show up the best for me, in, in my opinion, 
our cyan in yellow. So color equals color dot cyan. Uh, make trail equals true. Uh, let's run that. What the heck did I do? I know what I, look at that. Okay, so they're too big. Uh, and I, I don't know why I put a comma there. That's what I want. And that's too big, so let's make, I can, either, I can make them further apart. Uh, so let's just increase this to seven centimeters. Let's do uh, 15 centimeters. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm, ha I'm happy with that. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, give some initial parameters here. Let's say uh, M1.M, the mass. So it's, it's that big, let's say it's 50 grams and M2 is 78 grams. So 0 0.05. M2.m, and here you'll see that it's really useful to attach that property of mass to the object uh, so that I don't have to say M1, M2, I can just say M, and it's a property of M1. Uh, it, it does help if you do it this way, uh, 0 0.078. Um, I also need the initial momentums of both of these, so let's say M1.p equals M1.m times vector 0, 0, 0. I'm just going to start them from rest. And then m2.p equals m2.m times vector 0, 0, 0. Now I need some properties of the spring. I'm going to make the spring. So let's say k equals 10 newtons per meter. L0, um, hmm, I guess it should make it stretch a little bit. So the, the two things are 15 centimeters apart. So let's say that uh, the, the unstretched length is uh, 0 0.12. So stretch a little bit. Now I should actually, I can make the spring. So let's say spring equals helix. That's a 3D object in Python. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the position is gonna be mass one dot POS. It's gonna be attached to one of them. And the axis is gonna be from mass one to mass two. So it's gonna be M2 dot POS minus M1 dot POS. Now I need the radius. Uh, that's gonna be the, the overall radius of the whole thing. Um, the whole coil. So if my if my mass has a one of them has a radius of 0 0.01. Let's say the radius is 0 0.005, and let's just run it and see what it looks like from that. Okay, so that's not too bad. Uh, I I can change the thickness of that to make it a little bit better, but I don't really care too much. But let's say thickness. I think that's what's called thickness is 0 0.007. I don't remember what the values of this would be. That's too thick. Okay, let's. Okay, good enough. Okay, so I haven't modeled anything. I haven't done the motion or anything like that. Now I need my parameters for time. T equals zero. DT equals 0 0.001. And my loop, while T is less than five, uh, rate 1,000. So <clears throat> I'm going to keep changing everything in my loop until T is equal to five. And... Uh, in order to make an animation in real time, I, I'm telling the, the program not to go more than 1,000 loops per second. And so since I have a DT of, of 0 0.001, that's going to put my in real time. You don't have to make it run in real time. You can make it run it fast. You can make it run slow. That's why that's there. Uh, okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do is to calculate the vector L. And I'm going to say the vector L is from mass 1 to mass 2. So L equals mass... 2 dot POS minus mass, I keep wanting to say mass 1 dot POS. Uh, now I can calculate the force on mass 1. So I'm going to say F equals, that's the only force that do that spring, negative K times mag L minus L0 times norm L. And that's exactly the same equation that I just wrote in the paper. So there's no magic there. Um, yeah. Now I can update the momentum of mass one. M1.P equals M1.P plus F times DT. Now let's update the momentum of mass two. Now I, I could recalculate the force on mass two because it's gonna, if the spring's pulling to the right on mass one, it's gonna be pulling to the left on mass two. Uh, but I already calculated that force. I just need the opposite of it. So I can just say m2.p equals m2.p minus f times dt. Now I can update the position. m1.pos equals m1.pos 
plus m1 dot p times dt divided by m1 dot m and the same thing for mass 2 m2 dot pos m2 dot pos plus m2 dot p times dt divided by m2 dot m finally update time or the loop will run forever t equals t plus dt okay let's see if this thing even runs you never know what's going to happen I, I don't know what's going to happen it should run i should save it too huh i guess you should save it two masses one spring is that funny yeah it's funny okay whoa i know what i did wrong so i do this sometimes i can fix this i don't know why i got that negative sign wrong right there I'll change that yeah i don't know why i i mean i always envision the the vector wrong let's see l is from one to two i think okay that's fine i i always do that it's just it's just a problem i have uh but you see one problem that it occurs here is if spring doesn't move so i actually need to uh, update that so let's say spring dot pos equals m1 dot pos so as m1 moves i need to move the location of that and then uh spring dot axis equals L. Let's see if that works. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now let's calculate the center mass and plot that uh, center mass in this problem. Um, so I'm going to go up here. Let's just put it right here. Let's say COM equals sphere. Uh, let's calculate. Let's, um, let's do that. Let's calculate the location of the center mass, and then we'll plot it, and then we'll update it. So I'm going to say rcom is the location of the center mass. And I'm just going to type in that equation I had for center mass. It's going to be uh, m1.pos times m1.m plus m2.pos times m2.m divided by m1.m plus m2.m2.m. That's it. Now I'm going to put my, my, my center mass sphere at that location. So its position is just going to be rcom. Its radius is going to be, I want it, I want it smaller. So let's say 0. Point, radius is 0. 0.005 and color equals color dot red. Let's see if that looks okay. Now down here, the, the masses are going to move. So I need to recalculate the center mass. So I can just copy this equation. And after I update the positions, I can recalculate the center mass, and then I can move the uh, center mass dot pos equals rcom. And let's see what happens. And there's my center mass. It's closer to the, the larger mass. That's what we'd expect, and it doesn't move. And that's okay. It doesn't move. Um, let's make a graph of the total. The, I can't plot the total momentum. I can plot the x momentum, or the y momentum, or the z. Let's do the x. So I'm going to say g1 equals graph, uh, x title equals time, y title equals px in kilogram meters per second, and then uh, width equals 450, height equals 200. F X. Let's call that FPX equals G curve, color equals color dot blue. Now down here, I need to plot the X momentum. So I'm just going to go right here, uh, FX dot, FXP dot plot T. Um, oh, I, sh I should do it for both. I should, I should have, I should do this. I need three graphs. So let's do FX. Let's just do F1. Uh, let's do F2. G curve color equals color dot red. And then FT for total equals G curve color equals color dot green. Now down here, I can plot those things. So this is going to be F1, sorry. Uh, T M1 dot P dot X. I, that's the X component of the momentum. F2 dot plot. T M2 dot P dot X 
and then f3.plot is going to be the total. So it's going to be t m1.p.x plus m2.p.x. And let's run that. And something bad happened. F3. Oh, I did. I called it FT. Did I call it capital T? No, just T. And there you go. So you'll notice that even though the larger mass has a greater mass, the momentums are completely equal and opposite. And, and the total momentum is zero and it stays at rest. Okay, now we can do something fun. Let's give uh, mass one also an initial momentum in the positive, initial velocity in the positive y direction and see what happens. So down here in one, let's just say it's uh, 0.5 meters per second and run it. Oh, that's in the x direction. I want it in the y. Well, that's fine. You can see here, though, that now the total momentum is not zero because that they both started off, mass one started off with a momentum of zero, mass two did not. So the total momentum at the beginning was not zero, and it's not zero the rest of the time, too. Um, so let's see, zero, let's put this at 0.5. Okay, that's kind of awesome, right? Now, you will also notice that the, the, the x momentum is zero. The x momentum is zero because they both had an initial momentum of zero at the begin with. If I go down here and change this to y, all these to y's, it's not gonna be zero. I'm not gonna change the label because I don't want to and you can't make me. I mean, you could probably make me, but I don't want you to think that you should. Uh, so there you can see that the total y momentum is zero. And you get this crazy complicated three-dimensional path. I mean, that's in 3D. Uh, but it's just calculating the force. There's nothing magic there. Now, what about the center of mass? Can you see the center of mass move? Let's turn off the trail on uh, this. Let's turn these to false. It doesn't want to change that. False, false, and then down here for my center of mass, I'm going to say make trail equals true. That be it'll be easier to see the motion of that center of mass, and there it is, moving at a constant momentum. So the momentum of the center of mass is the total can give me the total momentum of the whole thing. Uh, so. I think there's only one other thing that you could do here. I mean, definitely play around with this and try different initial conditions. But you could also plot the total energy and look at this in terms of the total energy. Uh, but like I said, springs are so super important. And because we can actually calculate the, the vector force of a spring at in, every instant in time. So it's easy to model numerically. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of other really interesting things with springs. And then the next video, I'm going to use springs to model collisions. Um, and it's going to be great and you're going to love it. And I will see you there. Talk to you later.